Today we'll be talking about a disease that results when a functional component of the immune system is absent from birth in a young child. This seven-year-old boy struggled with recurrent infections from infancy before a genetic defect in his immune system was finally identified as the underlying cause. Joshua was referred to an immunologist after his third episode of pneumonia in two years. Each episode had involved a different lobe of the lungs, so doctors had ruled out an underlying structural abnormality, and they had ruled out a viral pneumonia, which would typically have presented with a more diffuse pattern of infection in the lungs. Since birth, Joshua had also suffered from recurrent middle ear infections and several episodes of sinusitis. Partially due to his history of frequent illness, Joshua's mother had developed a very close relationship with her youngest child, and she was worried as she recounted her son's complex medical history yet again. She told the immunologist that Joshua's older brother, now 16 years of age, had also suffered from similar recurrent infections, and history seemed to be repeating itself with Joshua. In contrast, the family's 14-year-old daughter had been very healthy throughout her childhood, and Joshua's mother was confused by this because she felt sure that she had fed and cared for all three children in the same way. After a thorough physical exam that revealed middle ear infections in both ears and thick yellowish-green discharge from Joshua's nasal cavities, the immunologist ordered several lab tests to supplement the CBC and the test for complement activity that had both been ordered by the referring physician, both of which had come back normal. Based on the history of recurrent sinopulmonary infections in two male children in this family, the immunologist suspected an underlying genetic immune deficiency, so he ordered a test for serum immune globulin levels and a flow cytometry study to assess the levels of the different circulating immune cells in this child. Joshua's serum immune globulin levels were found to be abnormally low, and the flow cytometry studies revealed normal numbers of T cells and NK cells, but no B cells in the blood. To confirm the immunologist's suspicions, Joshua was immunized with diphtheria and tetanus toxoid, as well as a pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine. But one month later, his serum levels of vaccine-specific antibodies were undetectable. These findings, together with the family history, suggested that Joshua was suffering from an X-linked A-gamma globulinemia. Subsequent genetic sequencing showed that both Joshua and his brother had the same mutation, a deficiency of the Bruton's tyrosine kinase gene. Joshua's mother and sister each had one copy of the same BTK mutation, but the normal copy they each had on their second X chromosome prevented them from expressing the associated disease. BTK deficiency is the most common genetic underlying cause of B cell deficiency. In healthy individuals, this tyrosine kinase is critical for B cell maturation in the bone marrow. In affected males who lack a functional gene on their X chromosome, B cell development is arrested and almost no functional B cells can develop. In women who are carriers, because of random X chromosome inactivation, the B cells that express the normal copy of the BTK gene will compensate for the B cells that undergo maturational arrest. These female carriers, like Joshua's mother and sister, usually experience no symptoms and usually have normal numbers of B cells in their bodies. In affected males like Joshua, the BTK deficiency leads to almost undetectable levels of B cells and correspondingly low levels of antibodies. Recurrent sinopulmonary infections are the hallmark of deficient B cell antibody production. Streptococcus pneumoniae is the most frequently identified microbe in these cases because effective immune clearance of strep pneumoniae and other encapsulated bacteria requires the binding of antibodies to polysaccharides on the surface of the bacterial capsule. Together with the binding of complement proteins, this opsonizes or tags the bacteria for uptake by phagocytosis and intracellular destruction. 
Joshua's inherited immunodeficiency led to a distinct clinical presentation because of the immune system component that was missing. Genetic deficiencies can lead to the functional absence of many different branches of the innate and adaptive immune system. In this case, the immunologist started with the clinical presentation and clues from the family history and worked backwards to determine the likely underlying problem so that he could start this young boy on a path to long-term management and much better health.